So our central utilities plant control room looks at all of the equipment that's in the central plant, which is heating and cooling equipment and also the power generation. We also can see all of the campus buildings uh, from one central station here. So it really becomes the hub of all information for all the energy being provided and used on campus. A system that looks at all of the campus buildings, which has about 50,000 separate individual points, is a system by Johnson Controls, and uh, our, in our interaction to it is called Metasys, which is the um, graphical interface so the operators can see uh, what's happening on all the buildings on all the campuses, including what's happening temperature-wise in every single space on campus. And we use that for demand and energy control. So from a central spot through global programming, we can control all the thermostat settings on campus with a single push of a button. It's really going to be the platform that we use really for our smart microgrid as we will know where the energy is going and then we can change set points uh, to reduce energy use in, in certain times or emergencies or demand response events. The other uh, portions uh, that the control room controls is of course the gas turbines which is are provided by solar turbines. Uh, they have a control system that we interface into and we can ramp uh, up and down the turbines as necessary. We also have a control system that looks at all of the different uh, heating and cooling equipment so we can the operators can see what the various temperatures are and uh, the critical control components. And then all the uh, other auxiliaries, pumps, and heat exchangers are all monitored by a different system. And so what we're trying to do here is integrate those all into a common platform with open protocols. And that's where the microgrid and the master controller come into place because they there are a, a non-proprietary database that connects into a bunch of different systems of information and then they'll take that and uh, uh, we will look at our generation, our load, and what's happening out on the grid and we'll determine what is the most efficient both in terms of cost and in terms of carbon to run our campus. And that, the beauty of that system is it'll be distributed, it doesn't need to be here in the central plant, but it needs to communicate with the central plant and with just like our electrical grid, which is one grid, microgrid that we control. Uh, our whole 40 megawatt load on campus, our internal campus uh, local area network and our intranet uh, operates at, higher, at high speeds with high broadband and enough capability to push 50,000 plus points around up to uh, time periods of one second and to be able to uh, maybe harvest that, all that data in our supercomputer center and do uh, uh, massive historical and um, queries and optimization of that data. So the control room is staffed 24-7, 365. We have people here on campus, uh, us and the police are on campus all the time. Uh, we have requirements because of the high pressure steam that's, that's a byproduct of the cogeneration process. So we always have to have at least two people here uh, in the plant, one at the control room, one normally doing surveillance uh, of, the, of the campus systems. And uh, we've been doing that since uh, since this central plant was installed in the, in the 60s, late 60s, early 70s, and we continue the same sort of manning even when we added the cogeneration system. So we we actually uh, own and operate our own uh, generation side of, of of the of the CHP facility. And then as we move into the microgrid and the automated controls. We don't see any need to increase the manning. This will, it'll just be in support and optimization of what we already have. So, most of the equipment is to make the cold water, the chilled water. And this is a, a, a machine that takes steam to power a steam turbine, and then the steam turbine drives the refrigeration compressor to make the chilled water. And the steam comes off of the cogeneration process or the combined heat and power. So this is how we use the thermal energy that comes off uh, the gas turbine. In the day, all the steam uh, that, that makes the chilled water from the steam is not enough for the campus load during the day. So what we do is we use the thermal storage tank during the day, and at night when we need to recharge
recharge it and our campus le load level is low, then we turn on our electric machines and charge the tank at night. So we use energy at night that's cheap and available to use during the day in the form of uh, water, thermal energy, when our load is high. This is equipment that makes the uh, uh, hot water for the campus. So we send out 350 degree water to campus that makes steam for the um, uh, for the laboratory facilities, but also is, it also makes uh, heating hot water for domestic use and also for building heating. So simple heat exchangers that exchange uh, the heat from the steam from the cogeneration cycle and makes uh, usable hot water for the campus. And this is a steam turbine generator. So anytime that the campus high temperature or chill water load doesn't meet the capacity of the cogeneration facility and we have some extra steam, then we spill that over into a steam turbine generator. This is a three megawatt unit that sort of uh, uses any excess steam to make more electricity. Once, once we generate the chill water and high temperature water, we deliver that through a series of pipe, uh, uh, piping network uh, through a tunnel system that goes underground and then gets the energy from the plant to the buildings and back again. This is a cogeneration facility. And what we have is uh, two gas turbines that are in these um, beige housing. They take air in combusted in a gas turbine, and the products of combustion are hot enough to make steam. So, down at the end is a, a boiler that makes steam out of the waste gas. After that, there's a pollution control system, and that's really what separates us from most other plants, is a different sort of pollution control system that can get the levels of pollution or NOx down uh, to levels that are, aren't really achieved by other facilities. One of the points here is because our levels of because our levels of NOx or pollution are so low, we can actually have shorter stacks because we don't need to get the products of pollution so high. So that, that's our stack right there. Our our the metric that we use is that before cogeneration, when we're only burning natural gas in boilers, we we're actually giving off more tons of NOx a year than we do now when we put the, since we put the uh, combined heat power plant into operation and we also burn about two and a half times more natural gas than we used to and our levels of pollution are lower. So the uh, Central Utilities plant, the first building on campus, uh, houses all the equipment to heat and cool water that then goes out and heat and cools, heats and cools the buildings. So inside we have machines that uh, cool water and machines that heat water up. And then um, as they exchange their, as they pick up the heat from the campus and the chill water side, then they transfer the heat to the refrigerant and then the refrigerant transfers its heat uh, back to the atmosphere through the cooling towers in a very efficient evaporative process. So uh, the heat, all the heat in the buildings um, through all of our six million square feet is gathered into the chill water system and then rejected through the cooling towers. So inside the building, the building transfers its heat through the air into our chilled water system. Our chilled water system then transfers it into the refrigerant in the machines in the plant. And the refrigerant then transfers its heat to the cooling towers. And as the water falls down, it transfers the heat to the atmosphere by an evaporative process and discharges it into the atmosphere. Our chilled water load here on campus in the San Diego area peaks during the day, of course, when the sun's out. Uh, but our capacity to meet that needs uh, has to be done through steam powered and electric powered chilling. The, the campus total load is the highest then. And so what we do is instead of running uh, high powered, expensive machines during the day that run off electricity, we instead run them at night and store that energy in this 4 million gallon, 87 foot tall thermal storage tank. So at night when our campus load is low uh, and we have capacity in our cogeneration system, we then fire up all of our electric chillers and then uh, start charging this tank with cheap off-peak power. And then at about 6 or 7 in the morning, we'll shut all the machines down. The tank will be fully charged with 39 degree water. And then we'll discharge that water to the campus as needed as the peak load 